hello everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another review of love after lockup season three episode six a gamble in the desert so we're starting off with destiny and sean so they're off to las vegas i think that's where sean lives yeah that's where he lives so they're off to las vegas they get on a plane they fly to vegas and he has a nice house he has a really nice big house so there's they have two weeks until her court date and sean wants destiny just to kind of lay low relax keep herself out of trouble until your court date he doesn't want her partying drinking getting drunk because that's just going to be you know um opens up that door of her doing something stupid and getting in trouble again so he just wants her to lay low just for until you go to your to go to your court date but you can't tell destiny a damn thing destiny's like you can't tell me what to do i'm in vegas i want to experience vegas i want to party and i want to party hard so sean tells her that well i've invited a couple of friends over so we're just gonna chill here for the night and just have a peaceful night with my friends and she's like bump all that when your friends come over we'll have a little peaceful night or whatever but then i need to hit the strip so the friends come over which is his best friend hector and his wife and they get a taste of what destiny is all about destiny is wild now the funny thing to me sean said that he's a really low-key quiet guy and he really wanted a low-key quiet girl or something to that effect and i'm like then why are you looking at prison websites dating websites why are you seeking out someone who went to prison because i would think that a woman who ends up in prison especially a woman who ends up in prison multiple times is far from low-key and quiet so he doesn't like this destiny this party girl destiny sean is not feeling it but i'm like well what do you expect her to be like this is a woman who's been in and out of jail she has a fifty thousand dollar bomb because she's an escape she's an escape risk what do you think is happening here sean you thought you were getting some mousy little librarian no you got you a wild child this is what you signed up for. you know exactly miss me with the whole i don't sean okay oh <sighs> so they go to the casinos and when they're at the casino basically destiny okay destiny has said in her confessional that when she was incarcerated she had many relationships with many girls and that she doesn't stop she doesn't want to stop any of that when that now that she's free she still wants to be with women as well as to have sean or whatever man in her life as well she wants to have her cake and eat it too she wants the best of both worlds and so she was going to tell sean but then she changed her mind she decided that she's not going to tell sean but when they're out with the friends and they're talking and stuff um Hector asked her if she had relationships with girls in prison. I don't remember. I think she said she did. I think she said she did um, have a relationship with girls in prison. I don't remember. But anyways, the girl got drunk. She was drinking. She wanted to party. And she wanted to party hard. And you could tell that Sean really wasn't feeling it. I mean, she was just talking reckless. Um, I forgot all the crazy stuff that she said. But, you know, she's she's pretty wild. She's pretty out there. And um, in her confessional, she said that um, she's trisexual and that she'll try anything once. She's just down for whatever. Whatever makes her happy, you know, she's down. So, good luck, Sean. Then we go to Shanda or Shonda and Tyrese. So, Tyrese is waiting with this blue suit on waiting for her to come out he's waiting for 45 minutes he's been waiting out there outside the prison um she doesn't show up so he gets worried she ends up calling him and said hey they took me to a bus stop instead of just letting me go out the prison i'm at a bus stop so come get me so he drives over there he picks her up and um she says in her confessional that she had more than one uh relationship she that Tyrese was on her only boyfriend. She had about eight or nine boyfriends while she was in prison. So they ride, they're on the way to the bus. He's on the way to the bus stop. Um, he picks her up at the bus stop. He likes what he sees. You know, he's like so enamored by her. He gave her a change of clothes. Then he's supposed to take her to the halfway house. And on the way to the halfway house, they stop somewhere to get something to eat. Um, Sh Shonda says, you know, she talks about how her dad was manufacturing meth. Her mom died from alcoholism. And, you know, 
we're getting to know more about Shonda. And Tyrese, he's like really into Shonda. He's even talking about marrying Shonda. And she even says something about that blue suit because she showed picture. They showed the pictures that he had sent her while he, she was in prison. And he has a nice body. He has a really nice body. I don't know why. And I think when she came out, when she saw him, I think she thought she was going to see that guy in those pictures. You know, with those tight shirts, mus muscles bulging everywhere, looking really fine and sexy. That's what she was expecting to see. But he shows up, you know, in his grandpa's suit, ill-fitting suit. And she just didn't understand that. So we move on to Christiana and John. So, Christiana is at the halfway house, so she can't, for whatever reason, John couldn't go pick her up, but he did pick up her mom. So, he takes her mom out to eat, and the mom is really not feeling John and Christiana's relationship. Um, John tells the mother that, you know, they're married now, and the mother asked, well, how long have you really known each other? And John said, we've known each other for three months. And the mom even questions whether or not the wedding was a real wedding because it was a native wedding. And so the mom was like, I don't even know if that's a real wedding, if they can be considered legally married. Well, if there's a marriage license, it doesn't matter what the ceremony was. If there's a license issued by the state, it's a real wedding. So... He tells her that he's been married four times and then we learn that John left his first wife for her cousin and married the cousin while he was still married to the first wife. And um, I'm just like, what? What are you talking about? What are you doing? And he tells her that he's also been to prison himself. So he would be, he's a good match for Christiana because he would understand more than the average person what she's going through the things that she needs to do the things that she needs to support her on um the things that he can expect from her he's prepared because he's been down that road before whereas the mom doesn't see that as a good thing because she sees okay these this is two ex-cons probably in, who are going to be enabling each other and then both of them are going to end up in trouble and christiana also has a substance abuse problem she's addicted to crack then we go to Maurice and Jessica. So they're eating at the restaurant. Now, they're at the restaurant after they leave the cousin's house. And they're trying to figure out what is their next plan. He wants to go to Vegas with her. He doesn't care about his parole, violating his parole. He doesn't really care. He wants to go to Vegas. He wants to get the hell out of California. She wants him to do the right thing. She does want her. She does want him to come back home with her. But she also wants him to stay out of trouble. And she doesn't want him to violate his parole. But anyway. Anyways, at the restaurant, so the waitress comes to take their order, and Maurice is totally checking out the waitress. And then Jessica sees Maurice checking out the waitress, which leads me to this. Maurice has been incarcerated, I think, for seven years. Now he's out. He lo he's like, I mean, Maurice looks like a viral, viral young man who's just been let out from prison after seven years. Is he prepared to be with one woman? Because the way he was checking out that damn waitress, if that waitress would have given him the go-ahead, they would have been going ahead in the bathroom right then and there with his wife sitting at the table by herself. That's exactly what would have been happening. And I just can't imagine Maurice being... A hundred, he's a good-looking guy. I cannot imagine him being 100% faithful to Jessica. So I think even Jessica said... I think even Maurice said, said something about, you know about why can't Jessica go back to Vegas and he just stays in Compton I'm thinking okay he wants to be alone he doesn't want to be you know shackled to to Jessica I think he's ready to kind of you know experience some real freedom and you're going from prison to a marriage like that <laughs> just anyways so he starts saying things to me like he wants to Anyways, let me put, push that to the side. I myself don't understand why Jessica just doesn't go off to Vegas because she doesn't want to stay in Compton. She does not want to live with his cousin. Not at all. Okay, so go home. Go to Vegas. And then come visit your husband on the weekend or whatever you got to do. But go home. Leave your boy, leave your husband here in Compton, in California, where he can finish off his parole. Y'all can't be taking these kind of risks. And so I feel like he 
when he tells her, let's just go to Vegas, let's just go to Vegas, you know, uh, bump my, I don't care about my parole, let's just go to Vegas. And she's like, well, what if your parole officer calls and you have to like go meet up with him like on the, uh, like without any notice or anything. And he's like, so we'll just turn back around and he's like, let's just go to Vegas. Just keep on driving. Let's just go to Vegas. And I think he's saying this so that she can be like, no, Maurice, that's bad. I don't want to take you to Vegas and then, you know, you have the chance of getting in trouble. No, Maurice, I'm going to take you back to Compton. Then I'll just go to Vegas. And so now, you know, he gets exactly what he wants. He keeps her happy because now she knows that he's not going to violate his parole by leaving the state. And he keeps his freedom because he's going to be in Compton. I don't know how many hundreds of miles away from Las Vegas. And he can kind of do whatever the hell he wants to do in California while his wife is in Vegas. And then when his wife comes down to visit him in California, you know, he'll straighten up, make sure there's no no clues of any woman being around and get the house all nice and clean. You know, don't show any panties or condom wrappers or nothing like that whenever Jessica comes and visits. So be the best of both worlds. I think that's what he wants to do. And I think that's why he's like, let's just go to Vegas because he knows that Jessica's not going to do that. Jessica's not going to take him to Vegas. She doesn't want him to get in trouble. So leave your wife in Vegas. You stay in California. You get the best of both worlds. Quaylen and Chevelle. Okay, so he knocked her out three times. He gave it to her three times. So he had a lot of pent-up energy. And she even said something like, I didn't think he would last that long because he was gone for so long. You know, nobody thought he would last that long, but evidently he did. He, and he lasted long enough to give it to her three times. So they're on the way to her home. Now, okay, I have a lot of problems with Quaylen and Chevelle's relationship. What I don't like is that how Chevelle is pushing this man onto her daughter, her little girl. Because she says that her daughter sees him as daddy and I think calls him or refers to him as daddy. Why are you doing that, Chevelle? You don't even know if you and him are going to be able to last because he's been in prison for 12 years. Now that he's out, you have no idea who he is. He has no idea who you are. So now that he's out, you've already, you've already, um filled up your daughter's head with these fantasies of daddy coming home and you know she refers to this man as daddy sees him as daddy or whatever before he's even out you've already are starting to build this bond between him and your daughter without even knowing whether or not y'all are going to even last if he's even daddy material if he's even husband material if he's even boyfriend material you have no idea and it's just wrong that you already have involved your daughter in your mess, in your adult mess. So what she should have done was not even mention this man to her daughter until she could kind of figure out where the relationship was going. She has no idea where this relationship is going. Anywho, so um, he comes home, her mom is waiting there, and the mom is asking some really tough, good questions. I like her mom. So her mom is like, so what are your plans now that you're out? And he's, you know, he says he's gonna, um, I forgot what he said, but he plans on, he said that what's gonna motivate him to go out there and be responsible and get a job is Chevelle and, and her daughter. That's his motivation. And then the mother asked, well, what about getting married? And he was like, well... You know, I just really need to work on myself right now. Or something to that effect. He wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm already looking at rings. I'm already thinking about dates. Um, yeah, this is going to happen. He's not even, he didn't say nothing like that. He was just kind of hemming and hawing and like, well, you know, we kind of have to see where things go. And Chevelle in her confessional was like, you know, when he was in prison, he was all about marrying me. Of course he was, girl, because he needs you to take care of him. Of course he was prom. Why are people so stupid? And I'm getting mad. Of course he was talking about marrying you when he when he was in prison behind bars. Of course. That's what they do. That's how they get you. That's how they lure you in so you can put money on their books, send them letters, go visit them so they can have someone to get through their time. And now that he's free and he's got a taste of freedom, of course he ain't talking about marriage. Chevelle, stop it. I've never dated nobody in prison, but I know how the game goes. Why don't you, Chevelle? Oh, let me calm down. You got this little girl involved already. And now you're hearing this man talking about how he he's not even really ready to marry you. 
Chevelle, okay. All I can hope is that uh, Quaylen will give Chevelle what she wants because there's a child involved. Or if it's not, if you can't give her what she wants right now, if you don't see yourself, Quaylen, marrying this woman within the next three months, let her go. Let her go before you and this, before this child gets so attached to you that you're going to break her heart when you disappear because you will be disappearing. So let her go now. If you can't do it in three months, propose to marry her and be married and get a job and take care of this family. Let her go now so that that child does not get her heart broken when, you know, you take off because you will be going to Texas. I definitely see Quaylen going back to his mother in Texas when things get too real in uh, Kansas City with Chevelle. Oh my goodness, that's all I have. I really don't like getting this worked up in my videos and showing this much emotion, but I couldn't help myself with this Quaylen and Chevelle mess. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you come back next week. Bye.